We also have been joined now by uh, Professor Tahir Maman, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. He's also a uh, former DJ of the Nigeria Law School. Thank you for coming on this morning, Prof. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, you know, th this is uh, something many just don't know how to relate with. First of all, the Vice President has said that uh, he is going to waive his immunity to ensure that uh, this is addressed headlong. Now, how does that stand in the face of law? Can the Vice President actually waive his immunity? The easy answer to that is no, he cannot. Oh. Uh, Section 308 of the Constitution does not permit the holders of those offices to simply say, look, I set aside my immunity and that is, that is the end of it because it attaches to the office, not the person of the occupant of the office. And uh, the Constitution is not a contractual document between the person and Nigerians. It's a document uh, that governs the affairs of uh, Nigeria. But over the years, the courts have provided some kind of leeway where there are allegations against persons uh, enjoying immunity. Investigations can be carried out um, without, of course, any process of court involved and uh, those information cannot be kept until the person is no longer enjoying immunity. Uh, that is irrespective of whether they agree or not. But in this case, the response of the vice president is very robust, understandably, very strong and robust, understandably, uh, because a reputation which the man built over the years for so long as a professor of law, you know, uh, uh, senior advocate and now vice president of Nigeria is, is huge. And uh, I believe he has a believable personality in the eyes of Nigerians. So my problem with, uh, so his, the position he's taken is right, I believe. Uh, I right remember, to have issued the statement, but that have issued legally the statement. speaking, but you say he cannot waive it. You no, know, he can't waive it, certainly. He cannot. It is the office that is protected, not himself. But he can allow investigations to go on if you so. According to the law, you can still be investigated even with immunity. Yes. But they will, yes. much later, they can That's maybe right. only leave the office. A lot of governors have been investigated in the past. And uh, when some of them went to court, the court said, no, it doesn't stop investigation. The only thing that can be done is issue a process, mm -hmm. compulsion to appear. So you can't take any judicial step in terms of going to court to prosecute uh, the so, whole So just to be immunity. clear, uh, yeah. Prof. <laughs> On what grounds then does the president say if this vice is? Yeah. On, on what ground? Thank you. On what ground does the vice president then make the statement that he is ready to waive his immunity if this is the position of the law, just as you have said it? Well, as I said, three or eight is very clear. It's very clear. It's just an expression of his uh, how adamant he is about, forceful about he is, he feels about the whole matter. And uh, so if he wants to subject the security, allow the security agencies to investigate, they can go ahead to do it, you know. So this is where he's, uh, it's a moral thing. It's not a legal thing now. Uh, his stance is it's a moral one. And um, my major concern, uh, Frank has, you know, kept his word. He said, look, he, he stands by what he said. But... So far, what is the public domain is still short of what somebody with this kind of allegation and uh, against the officer, against the person, you know, he's alleging, you know, he's still short of the information he should provide to the public. Because that, that's Mr. Frank, right? Yes, because when you allege 90 billion, 90 billion is not, uh, it's not 19,000 uh, naira. So you should provide facts and figures, sources, you know. Vouchers, who collected but what? If the matter yeah. gets to court, no, the no, court no, can no. compel him to, to provide a candidate. Obviously. In fact, actually, he can even, be, he can even face criminal defamation. Even yeah. there's a criminal aspect to it. Because I remember some three months ago, uh, there was uh, a similar allegation against um, National High Chairman. And uh, the person was charged to court. He said, look, go and bring the information. There's a criminal defamation. So he was asked to provide the information. He didn't, couldn't uh, provide the information. And he was convicted, hmm. you know, on that ground. So it's a very dicey position he is taking. He needs to 
if he wants to win the war in the public domain, then he has to go beyond what simply asserting. But some, that some that kind would of also wonder, it. Prof, yeah. should, given what you just said now, yeah. should anyone be taking him serious? Well, if you look at the personality involved and the amount involved, definitely should be taken seriously. I definitely should be taken seriously. But, you know, Prof, if you say that the VP cannot waive his immunity, he's a professor of law, he knows these things, yes. why would he say, I'm ready to waive my immunity when, according to the law, you cannot do that? Well, as I said, I keep on coming back to it. It's a moral issue. It's a moral issue. And the investigations can be carried out. That's just the best that can okay. be done. Now, one other thing that, of course, this allegation because also... Because that's Section 308. Yeah. It's not a permissive... Uh, provision of the Constitution is mandatory. It's absolute in its terms. So it, it is with the office. It is with so the office. So that yes. means that what they say between uh, MB Securities and Tinubu uh, in 2001, where they were saying that, look, for you to waive your immunity will mean that you have to step aside from the office or resign. Yeah. And then yeah. That, yeah. that's the meaning of waiving your immunity. Well, if it? we carry to that extent, yes, of course. I mean, if somebody resigns, automatically he doesn't have immunity. That follows, so he's impeached or whatever it is. And um, the other way to do it is if you generate all this information, send to the National Assembly, and he, the, the National Assembly finds it to be a gross misconduct. Well, obviously, there will be a major uh, breach of the Constitution, and the person but can be impeached. Can the Vice President yeah. sue? Since so they say, can we? Can he be sued? Can he sue in, in this case? He 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 can. He can. He can sue. Yes. But can he be sued? No. no Was no. it in office? No, he can't. So why why can't that, be sued. that would uh, some would say that the law is one sided or partial? Well, it is the office. That is the whole essence of really that provision. The whole idea is it's a major distraction for you or for anybody to subject the whole of that office to court processes. You can imagine the man going in and out, in and out, you know, and so state affairs will suffer. So a lot of times, uh, as I said, uh, some of these provisions are made uh, with a view to protecting that office so that uh, they will be available to manage the affairs of the state and be distracted from uh, unnecessary litigation. And then, mind you, uh, the period of the office is not computed for the purposes of liability. So that if, say, like now this particular government still has about three, uh, barely four years now. So any issue, any investigation, any breach uh, that is investigated will now be kept until uh, the end of their term. And the period of the service will not be counted when it comes to issues of time, you know. And... Uh, so it's a very fine balance, and it's very important, obviously, for offices, public offices to be protected, despite that uh, they need to be accountable to the public. And, hmm. uh, but how do you deal with that question of accountability if the law protects them from prosecution? Very right? easy. That's why the impeachment provision is there. If you have such huge constitutional breach, then you make the case and take it to the National Assembly, and then they will do the needful. They will then, subject them to, the, to, to, to scrutiny, and um, that would be a gross misconduct by whatever definition. Some would also put that in the, in the box of, OK, some political machinations can uh, make that impossible. Yes, that's quite true. That's quite true. OK, but one other thing, of course, this allegation also smears uh, the, the name of the FIRS as well. It does. And it of does. course, the FIRS has also come to say, OK, there is a strong process that makes it impossible for them to release that kind of uh, money. How do you situate that you know, in response to Timmy Frank's allegations? Public resources are protected. And as I have said all this on programs here, Nobody can take out one cobble of government from a breach of several laws. There's no provision for, for instance, like a contribution to a political party. There is no provision at all for it in our laws. So if that happens, that will be stealing, that will be theft, yeah. and that will be yeah. a, a so major breach as well of We also did so check with, with the FIRS, so that is part of this the press statement that uh, Mr. Wahag Badamasi did send to yes. us uh, concerning their position on that particular matter, which, as you say, 90 billion is not 90 naira. <laughs> it's a lot of money. But if you say that, um, uh, according to the law, 
immunity doesn't cover investigation. No, so no. if the agencies are investigating, or should it have been those uh, anti-graph agencies, should they have been the ones speaking rather than allow the vice president to uh, say that he's going to sue? Because if they had spoken, wouldn't that have at least let Nigerians know that, well, look, we are looking into this matter. No need for the hoopla. Well, uh, there's one aspect of the allegation. I don't know who made that one. We are, they also said uh, uh, the Amco Boros program, and social investment, you know, money was... That is also circulating? Exactly, that one is also circulating. And then the EFCC came in because the impression they gave is that the EFCC is investigating and saying, no, they are not investigating any such thing. And uh, so to that extent, uh, that is correct. But, you know, the office of the vice president is so huge. And as I said, uh, the personality of the person there, he, he's not known to be associated with anything about corruption. So he's right, you know, to feel, to have that evolution and uh, want to make a statement on it. So it's perfect. The FIRS uh, must come out, you know, to tell... Uh, Other than they what have. they've done? They, they issued a press release? Well, that's all they can, they can do because the allegation is against them. So it's not for them to prove their innocence. It's the person who is not saying, okay, look, 90 billion has been taken from them. That has to establish, put in the public domain uh, in checks and figures and how. Who collected the money? How was it collected? You know, delivered to who, in what circumstances? All these figures have to be there. You know, but Prof, this particular scenario raises, of course, much more questions because I think there's also been in recent history where I think it was former governor of uh, Edo State who I think there was some allegation against him. I said he too was going to waive his immunity to sue the person. So we've seen some governors now, uh, the vice president faced with this allegation. So is it, should we reconsider whether or not they should remove that immunity clause to allow them, because some of them actually want to stand in and clear themselves and protect yeah. their integrity. So sh is that something that we should take a second look at, saying, look, they actually want to clear themselves, but they can't because they have immunity. So they can only be investigated up until when they are out of office, then they can face prosecution, assuming they are guilty. Well, uh, some of these cases you have mentioned are far and just in between. They, they, they're not an everyday occurrence. So you have to be careful about the very reason for that immunity clause itself. So if something happens to one or two governors or, and uh, the vice president now, that shouldn't be a reason for us to begin to look at uh, the, the clause itself. To me, it serves a very good purpose. And uh, if the politics is right, and the legislature, you know, if they're up to their responsibilities, there's a way that, around that, it. That's double if, Prof. <laughs> if the <laughs> politics is right, if legislatures are up to it. Yeah, as you so, mentioned earlier on. So how do we then, what, what if, because politi they will no, always take advantage, no, politicians. No, so no, if the individual knows that, look, I can't <clears throat> do certain things, uh, clear my name until yeah. I'm out of office, how does he prove his innocence if they take advantage and say, well, this matter is here? No, no, no. Somebody doesn't prove innocence. It's already, the law already gives, presumed that you are innocent. That's a very basic principle of law. So you don't have to prove anything. It is for the party who is making the allegation to, prove to come it. out with the facts and figures. And I tell you, if today Frank was to go the whole hog as he is uh, saying we meet in the court, you know, Invite one of the major papers or go to the television and say, look, on so-so day, the chairman or so person released 50 billion, 20 billion, 10 billion. Our bank accounts are there because you can't make this kind of allegation without access to the details. Mm. Okay? And I don't think it's something that uh, you will carry cash, 90 billion cash and go <laughs> and dump in somebody's house. No. This is a transaction that have to go through the banks. So if you have that information, you go to the Press. Well, there is, I'll so, provide the information. Let me quickly follow up on your if question. If you go to the press. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then when that goes to the press and it goes into the public but domain. But the press, press, you know, retracted. No. Yeah. And that's why it's, Vanga said they are not sure of the source. That is the problem. That's why they withdrew. They withdrew. Okay. Because they are not sure of the credibility of the information available to them. Why publish it in the first place? That's another. If he wants, he can join Vanguard. There's nothing stopping him from joining Vanguard. Definitely. Okay.
for purveying the what, yeah, but, what, but if he now addresses the press conference yeah. and as you say he shows bank accounts and everything yes. and the press covers that yeah. will they be liable no no if it is a fact they would not be liable they would, be, they would have been covered properly covered okay. you know speak to speak to this one and i tell to... you maybe if i just end if that kind of information is in the public domain and everybody sees it is a very credible information the holder of the office will almost certainly resign or be impeached. Hmm. I can imagine the kind of pressure that will be put on the legislature to do the needful. Okay. So for that kind of thing to do, you have to, the person making the allegation has to be sure of the fact that he has. But will, will the, all that information still be relevant give in the, from what Chamberlain said, after the person leaves office, in the light of 3081C, hmm. provided that in ascertaining whether any period of limitation has expired, for the purposes of any proceedings against a person yeah. to whom this section applies, no account mm -hmm. shall be taken of his period of office. That's right. That's right. Criminal liability doesn't expire. And then the Constitution is very express about that. That period shall not be counted. You know, so do the two major components of the law. That is one. Uh, there's no end to criminal liability. So if the person is out of office uh, by 2023, you can now go after him on, based on all the information that you have. And then there's four years. And even if by, by chance there's anything that uh, where the time is important, the Constitution clearly says it shall not be counted. So there's a sufficient safeguard, in my view, you know, to you know, have a balance between accountability, and the need of the public to know, you know, and uh, protect public resources and all that. All that needs to be done is whoever is making the allegation has to be on a firm ground. And if I were him, uh, what, what's wrong? There's no problem in uh, turning in this information to anti-corruption agencies if he has them. You know, they will go in and do the needful. The only thing they can't do is to issue process against the vice president. But as he has said, He's prepared to waive his immunity, which means if uh, they go to him to confirm or check information, they, he will be available. No, but to if, them. even without mistake. him saying that, yeah, the law he can be investigated. Exactly. Even without him saying so. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So it, it's something that uh, many will just keep on because there's so many questions about some of these things. But because of uh, yeah, certain but the law is very clear on them. The law is very clear on them. And what uh, he no, can do and what he cannot do. Yeah. There's no ambiguity there at all. Some some would also have <clears throat> just as you said earlier. Some would have wondered. Look, if you have all this information, why not put it out? There? Yes, put it out. Ninety billion. And you say, let's mean a court. That's not that's not a, a proper way an appropriate way to handle this. All right, uh, Professor Tahir Maman, O.N., Senior Advocate of Nigeria. We appreciate your coming on this morning. All right, so Thank there you go. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.